Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Android App Arena is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Android App Arena, episode 114 for Wednesday, September 7th, 2016. Sensor Tools. This episode of Android App Arena is brought to you by the Ring Video Doorbell. With Ring, you can see and talk to anyone at your door from anywhere in the world using your smartphone. It's like caller ID for your home. Right now, go to ring.com slash arena and get up to $150 off a Ring of Security kit with their limited time offer. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Android App Arena. I'm your host, Jason Howell. Nothing makes you feel quite as nerdy as monitoring the diagnostic readings that your phone is spewing forth. I mean, the information's there for the picking. You just need to have the right app to pick it, like an apple from the tree. Finding a reason to pick it, well, that's another story altogether. From monitoring the health of your device to making sure you're charging your phone at maximum speed to checking on the health of your mobile network, I've got you covered in this week's roundup of a few sensor tools that I've encountered over the past year or so. Let's take a look. One of the most critical elements to any mobile device is the power and sustainability of the battery that gives the device its life in the first place. An app called Ampere is a great way to monitor your battery's health, and in some cases, it can make sure you get maximum charge when you plug it in. First. This main screen gives you all of the essential details about this single point of time as it relates to your battery. You'll know the rate that your device's battery is discharging if it's unplugged, and you'll know how much battery is left, the condition of that battery, its temperature, its voltage reading, and more. Now, as you swipe left, you're shown the same information that we just covered, but laid out in different ways. So you can actually find the view that works best for you, and once you do, you just tap that star down below to favorite that view going forward. I'll go ahead and plug my device into fast charging power. And now you'll see that everything changes a little bit. The color scheme changes, showing that the phone has shifted states. Now I see that it's charging quickly with readings around 1250 milliamps. Now I'll go ahead and unplug that fast charger and swap in a charger that doesn't support fast charging. And now you see those readings coming in around 1020 milliamps. That's going to make this device charge slower over time. So Ampere is actually a great tool for monitoring the charging health of your gigantic stash of charging bricks and the cables that you have lying around at home. Ampere is free with a $1.20 upgrade inside the app to remove the ads. Find it now in the Play Store. If you want to keep track of your mobile network provider's track record as it relates to the device that you use every day, then you should check out Signal Spy. It was once called FiSpy, but the developers had to change its name to remove any remnants of Project Fi from the title. But that right there is a clue as to why this app exists. Signal Spy is a great way to keep track of which mobile network you connect to the most while you're using Project Fi. This main status page shows me that I have a reasonably strong T-Mobile network connection at my house. I also happen to be connected to my Wi-Fi access point right now. Now up in my notification shade, you can see a tiny little T-Mobile icon. That shows me that it's currently connected there. Fi users would see that switch between T-Mobile and Sprint as Project Fi does its dynamic switching in the background. I've now disabled Wi-Fi and it disappears from my main screen here, forcing me to use T-Mobile. I can tap into network history and then into T-Mobile to get more details around the strength of that connection, what type of signal I'm receiving at that point, and a whole host of other details that, <laughs> I'll be honest, I don't understand. The data usage tab shows me how much data each app on my phone has transferred through that particular mobile connection. But truthfully, this app is designed for Fi users, and it's an excellent way to know for sure which signal your device opts for the most as you use your Fi service. Pro users can pay $2 to gain access to a number of exclusive features, including expanded history of your connection data and dialer codes that allow Project Fi users to swap 
between T-Mobile and Sprint on their own accord. Find Signal Spy in the Play Store for free or with a pro upgrade for $2 inside the app. This next app falls firmly into the category of information overload, but it's really cool, not to mention bright and bubbly in its design. It's called Sensor Sense, and it's like a dashboard for the inner workings of your phone. This is the main panel of the app, which shows all of the primary information gleaned from the various sensors littered throughout your device. I'll go ahead and tap on pressure up top, and that opens up the broader scope of information related to the barometer inside my device. I'm given my altitude, got a fast moving graph of those fluctuations there, more details about what the sensor is capable of, and then down at the very bottom, more information about what this sensor is used for and how the figure is actually calculated. I'll go ahead and tap back out to the main screen. Let's check out light as another example. Uh, in this case, it's ambient light that's pulled in from the sensor that sits next to my camera. I can tap the play button, and that'll actually capture a moment in time if I want to capture that graph for later reference. All the way at the bottom is sound, which measures the decibel rating as captured from the microphone on my device. And that right there, that's just three sensor categories. You've also got the proximity sensor, the rotation vector, gyroscope from how fast your device is turned around and upside down and all that. There's the force of gravity. Also, the magnetic field, complete with a compass inside of that one. You want to check that out. There's acceleration force on all three axes, Wi-Fi signal strength, mobile network strength, latitude and longitudinal location, and finally, and this is a good one to have access to, battery, including the temperature of that battery inside. So many readings. Not sure I know what to do with most of them, to be honest, but someone does. And SensorSense organizes all of that information in, I think, a pretty obvious and enjoyable way. Find it for free with ads in the Play Store with a premium upgrade inside the app to remove the ads for $1.69. So much knowledge now, if only we knew what to do with all that data, but I am sure if someone can figure it out, it's you. So tell me how you manage all that data, arena at twit.tv. I can't wait to hear your responses. All right, let's take a minute to thank the sponsor of today's episode. That is the Ring Video Doorbell. There's a home burglary every 13 seconds. Most burglaries happen in broad daylight. Burglars will actually ring your doorbell to make sure that you're away, and that's their signal to break in. Well, Ring Video Doorbell has been proven to stop burglaries before they even happen. It allows you to see and speak to anyone approaching your door using your smartphone. Now, Ring is using their advanced motion detection technology to protect your entire property with their Ring of Security kits. Kits include a Ring Video Doorbell and may include a stick-up cam, there's a solar panel, chime, and possibly a solar security sign. Pro kits include a slim video doorbell pro. This is the new one with crystal clear 1080p HD video and night vision. Really nice. It's hardwired, so it never needs to be charged. The wireless and weatherproof HD stick-up cam keeps an eye on other parts of your property and actually allows you to hear and speak to visitors with two-way talk. You can plug the chime into any standard power outlet to know when you have a visitor, even if your phone is in another room. We have one of those in our living room. The illuminated solar security sign deters intruders before they even get to your door so they'll know you're protected. The Ring Video Doorbell and Stick Up Cam install in just minutes. It's super quick. And working together, they provide 24-7 monitoring of your entire home, whether you're in the living room or if you happen to be thousands of miles away. And if your parents do a lot of traveling uh, during the summer, I know mine do, this would be a great way to make sure they feel protected while they are away, especially because now... You know, my parents are firmly locked into the always connected world that we live in, thanks in no small part to me. Might as well give them the ability to see their house while they aren't there so they know everything is going to be there for them when they return as they expected. Join the millions of homeowners who protect their home with Ring. For a limited time, Android App Arena listeners can get up to $150 off one of the Ring of Security kits. Go to ring.com slash arena. That's ring.com slash arena arena. All right, up next, a way to get super nerdy with the volume level of the apps on your device. It's this week's Big App. Here's the scenario. You're in a car listening to some music, let's say on the YouTube music app on your way to work, full blast. You pause it as you walk into work, you sit down at your desk, 
and then you unlock your phone and that music begins blaring at full volume to everyone around you. Suddenly they all know that you secretly listen to Justin Bieber. Yeah, it's pretty scary. Well, with the app called Volume Master Pro, you can take control over the volume on your device in a few automated ways so you never face that shameful scenario ever again. Taking this example, why not assign a particular volume level to your connected Wi-Fi at work? I'll skip into the Wi-Fi control pane here and uh, select the Wi-Fi that my device connects to while I'm at work. Now, this is gonna pull up all of the main volume controls for media, alarms, rings, and notifications. Each can be affected when my device actually connects to that Wi-Fi access point or disabled so they never change based on the state they already were. And down below are a few more sound generating categories to dial in. So things like those loud dial pad tones when you dial a number or touchscreen sounds that bleep and bloop, you can have those turn off while you're at work but back on when you leave. Another way to tweak the volume of your device is on a per app basis. Now this might take some time to curate, but any app installed on your device can be set with those same volume defaults. So if you have any pesky repeat offenders, let's say YouTube, you can take care of them before they do any decibel damage to the people around you. Find Volume Master Pro in the Play Store for $1.49 right now. Now, I'm pretty certain I could just throw a 30% volume level on the YouTube app and never miss its sudden loud interruptions at exactly the wrong time ever again. Or, I don't know, maybe I could just stop using YouTube altogether. Just kidding. Send me your favorite apps and categories to arena at twit.tv or you can post those to the subreddit. That's androidapparena.reddit.com. Share them with me uh, there as well as the rest of the world. The show plays live every Wednesday around 5 p.m. Pacific following tech news today at twit.tv slash live. A new episode will appear later that evening in the feeds and on the show page at twit.tv slash arena. All right, that's it, folks. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Jason Howell, and I will see you next week in the arena.